years is going to be a lot of changes. We're looking at um, doing a lot of different things in that area. So um, welcome aboard. Um, Many thanks. And welcome to Moortown, Rachel. It's the nicest town in the state. Oh, I've, I'm already feeling that. So everyone's been extremely welcoming and that's very beautiful. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, as you can imagine. It's also a much nicer place to be than Queens right now. Yeah, yeah. a little yep. safer too, I imagine. Yep. Um, well, good, unless the board has any other questions or uh, concerns at all, we'll move on. But Jamie, thank you. I did get an well, email today uh, you, from Michelle. Um, uh, requesting payment uh, to go through with the payroll and we'll go ahead and sign off on that. Okay, um, great. And then that's, uh, so the board knows, I don't know if you saw the, the, the email, but she'll be, uh, Rachel will be working at the same rate as our previous uh, assistant librarian. I believe that was 378. I don't have it right in front of me, but. It was uh, 1373. 1373, thank yeah. you. 378, I guess I was real off. Um, so anyways, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and I'll sign off on that. Um, so uh, she can get paid. Hey, uh, Jamie, before you leave, uh, I just want to mention that I believe the route road crew is going to be uh, digging and putting in that uh, drain by that rear door next week. Uh, okay. I'll fix the library, I'm not sure, but there will be some activity around the back of the, uh, by the side of the library um, next week, we hope, if, you know, if the weather's right and, uh, and, and at Martin, uh, the schedule is, is correct. Okay, that sounds uh, good. I will let Corey know if you have any idea of what the um, more exact schedule will be for that work um, and could email the library, that would be great. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, okay. I've uh, sp already spoken with Corey on this, so she's okay. aware that something will be happening in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're just gonna need to uh, solidify some uh, concrete work so we don't end up with a open pit for a week or uh, more so we're just kind of trying to uh, hammer that down at this point but uh, she, I have spoke with Corey already uh, regarding the uh, digging okay Thanks. all right Thanks, um, and before I go I just want to say how thrilled we are that Rachel is working with us She's extremely well qualified and we feel very lucky to that she moved to Moortown and was available. So okay. thank you. I look forward to meeting you all in person someday. Yeah. Well, I think it's a win-win for us all. So um and, um, welcome. Rachel, what's your schedule in case anybody wants to stop in and say hi to you? Oh, I'll be working this Saturday and every Monday. And every so, and then it'll be every other Saturday and every other Thursday. Is that right? Correct. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. We look forward to getting together with you sometime. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thank right. you. I'm here. Yeah. All right. I don't see anyone else on. Anyone else um, uh, would be public comment. So let's go ahead and move on. Martin, I know you wanted to jump in. I think now would be as good a time as any. Um, did everyone get an opportunity to read Martin's email sent out today? Yes. Yes. Martin, could you recap? Why don't we start with um, well, your number one, it was the truck. Uh, yes, the truck. Uh, so as everybody knows, uh, originally um, Clark's was the only one that we had really gotten a solid figure from. So reached out to the other uh, Vermont dealerships that we have dealt with in the or worked with in the past to get quotes. Nobody has anything on the um, floor ready to go for the fall. So I didn't really feel right just using Clark's um, numbers as the go to numbers with nothing else to compare to. So I did a little more digging and found uh, two other trucks. Um, a Western Star um, and a Freightliner. Um, they're both, um, you know, outside the box a little bit, but um, would definitely meet our needs. Um, so we got some pricing from those to kind of update that email. Uh, I was doing a little digging in the paperwork and found that the two quotes that I had gotten from 
the Western Star and the Freightliner did not include a plow. Um, it's it's not unusual for them to do that because every you know each town has a different philosophy as far as plows, one ways, all angle, um, you know, fleet side. So there's numerous numerous plow packages out there. So so we need to basically tack on probably between six and nine thousand dollars onto those numbers that I put out earlier today. Um, I wish I had that paperwork in front of me, but unfortunately I left the shop without that uh, paperwork. So um, it, you know, I'm just going with rough estimates, but uh, I think we need to get a trade number from one of those um, other dealers and they both do take trades. One has expressed that he will be up to um, give us a trade number. Without that trade number, it's kind of a mute point to go forward. But at this point, I think, you know, apples to apples, I think if I had to choose, I would probably take the Clarks International. We already have one in the shop. It would keep our fleet the same. Um, we've done business with them a lot in the past. So I'm, I wouldn't look to jump ship, I guess, to a different make model or manufacturer and then wonder where we're going to get our service from so i'm um, still saying probably that international i just we needed to do our due diligence and make sure that there wasn't something way cheaper out there uh, i think it's um, important that we wait for the trade-in numbers with that said, just to make the board aware, we needed to take that 2012 to um, has an eight in the window, which is very unfortunate, but we, I mean, we cannot just sit on that truck. It needs an inspection. Um, we do use it enough to merit the inspection. So it's sitting at McLeod's waiting for fairly significant brake work. I'm guessing in the tune of $3,000 or so. Hopefully we can turn around and work um, whoever we purchase a truck from. Hopefully we can work that into a trade because um, that'll be real dollars invested in the truck. Um, but we don't really have a choice. It has an eight in this in the window. You know, we need to have that truck. Best case scenario on any of these trucks, we're waiting to November. If things don't go well, the truck needs to be ready to roll um, for us to use. So, you know, it's, it, it is an unfortunate situation, but um, we're, we can't roll around with an uninspected truck. Again, Martin, that is, that's Rodney's truck you're talking about, correct? Correct, correct yeah. One we're trading, yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure we were clear. Yeah. Sounded like that. So. So that's what's going on right now. I think what, what's uh, the what are you putting into it? Uh, break work mostly, um, a little bit of um, light work. Uh, so the plow lights the um, technician claimed didn't work because he still has his plow frame on that truck, um, and they need to work to pass inspection. I think it's as simple as a switch, a toggle switch in the cab, which we run you know, between plow and drive light. So yeah. hopefully that's it, but it's mostly brake work, which has kind of been our Achilles heel. Seems like on all the vehicles lately, uh, brake work has been, um, you know, fairly extensive on all three tandems. So hey, Martin on that, uh, uh, rather stupid maybe uh, question, but, Anyways, it, with Clark, I mean, it sounds like we're you're, we're leaning towards Clark on the new truck. They wouldn't touch this other truck as far as trying to get it inspected for us. I would be um, leery of taking it to Clark's to get an inspection on it. I think it could cost us way more than taking it to McLeod's. Um, okay. We just recently brought our 2018 to Clark's and. 
it ended up costing us um, just under five grand to get an inspection sticker on it due to mostly breaks, um, but a few other, there was a, a air valve issue. Um, so McLeod's is quite, they're certified to do brake work and they do it rel relatively cheap. Um, yeah. so I, with what, why are we trading with these guys if we feel that we, we can't take a truck there to get work done that we're going to get hosed by it? Why would we trade with them? Uh, because their trade, their trade prices and the prices of their trucks are super cheap, which I've, you know, learned as I'm trying to shop around here. I don't have an issue with international. Um, they like to do things 100% uh, by the book, and I don't blame them for that at all. But it gets extremely pricey when you start talking about... Um, you know, three, four new uh, brake cans, uh, slack adjusters on a three, four year old truck. So, um, it, you know, yeah. they like to say that uh, it's needed. I don't, I don't, I don't always agree with them, but I don't have, I don't have the certification to disagree with them. Um, you know, I just drive these trucks and, we make them go. So 95% of the time we take our um, inspections and routine brake maintenance to McLeod's, uh, which I feel is a um, adequate service. They sign off on them. I, it's kind of like you've got your very low end um, service and your super high end service where they're gonna change everything. Um, and we pick something in the middle uh, with McLeod's and they've treated us quite well over the years. And that's where we would do most of our routine maintenance work with. Um, we have had issues with Clark's in the past in their service department. Um, you know, that's not a, uh, news flash. I've had issues with them. I, frankly stated I would never own another international as long as I had a say in the process. Unfortunately, their pricing and their trade-in values are significant enough that I can't ignore that kind of price difference. Um, you know, I think when we bought Sean's truck, it was in the neighborhood of 25 grand difference to the next closest truck. That, that's really tough to ignore. Uh, Martin, I think that's good reason. I appreciate your your answer to that. I think it was a good answer. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Tom, you muted yourself. <laughs> Sorry. So, Martin, you're going to um, get the trade values and then uh, bring those back to the board. I am. I have uh, spoken with Clark saying that we hope they would hold that truck for us in the meantime. Um, and I think we definitely need to get a trade in value from one other person at the very least to see what that truck is worth. Clark's giving us $40,000. Um, no, we'll see. 40000 Forty thousand before, as is or was or whatever. Right? Uh, as is, I'm hoping that after this break work, we'd be able to get the difference out of them. Um, but I didn't really have a choice of sitting on a truck that we couldn't drive. It ha has an eight in a window, so technically it couldn't be driven anywhere. It would have to be trailer. Right, so, no, yeah, so you've done the right thing there. You need to get it inspected yeah. and make sure and if it needs brakes it needs brakes i mean you yeah. want to make sure you're safe correct um that's the most important thing um so i guess we're, as long as they're holding that truck for you at this point you don't need anything from us um, not not really originally i i thought that i would you know maybe ask the board to sign something saying that tend to per, per intent to purchase but i think we'll wait and see what we get for trades on these other the only one that really makes sense is the Freightliner. It's the only one in the ballpark of 
the Clark's truck. However, uh, as I learned today, it does not come with a plow, which is anywhere from a six to $9,000 option. So, um, you know, it's that much, it was right in the ballpark with the international, but now it's going to be six to $9,000 more than the international depending on trade. Yeah, that could. So once, so once we see the trade in value, we'll have a very clear path. I think of which truck we want to go with. And, and I've, uh, I stated in the past, I really don't want to have a fleet of three different trucks that, I mean, that makes no sense really. Um, you know, if we're talking three to $5,000, I would go with keeping the fleet to, at least as close to the same. So if, I mean, if we purchased a freight liner, we'd have a Mac an international and a freight liner. That makes no sense really. I mean, I mean, you could say that eventually you have to make those decisions, but, um, you know, I wish Mac had been able to come down some last time because I do like their trucks. I do like their service, but the, the price difference was just too much to ignore on uh, Sean's truck. So that's where we're at right now. Um, well, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Um, you know, we have another meeting, I guess it's on the first or next one. Um, so if there's something before then we need to get done, let us know. Okay. Yeah. On that particular issue. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll do. And then the, uh, uh, other thing I had was that Oh, one single axle. I, um, had an offer of 6,000 from, uh, Shane LL who, you know, it, I contacted him. Jeff Newton was originally interested in the truck, but I think the window time window just kind of fell away for him. Um, and he hasn't returned my most recent emails. Um, it, so I contacted Shane. He has, uh, you know, one truck and uh, excavating business, but it was his dad's, his dad's truck. Um, so I just made that offer to him and he was, more than agreeable to the $6,000, um, which I did contact Clark's to get an estimate on the worth of that truck. And they said, if you can get $6,000, you should take it, um, you know, pretty much running. So um, he's willing to uh, work that price off in hauling, which is ideal for us, I think. Um, you know, he could cut us a check, hits a general fund, and I don't see it in my budget. So it's not much good to me. Um, you know, so I just, so what, what is he going to charge you for hauling? Uh, he, he's been very fair. We have used him in the past. Uh, he has a new truck and I have not gotten a new price from him, but I'll make sure that it's in the, in the wheelhouse of other trucking companies, but we have used him in the past and he's actually, between five and ten dollars an hour cheaper with his old truck so i'll find out what that is before we close the deal um, but i do have a ton of hauling this fall with the uh, inch and a half plant mix for our uh, mud season i'm anticipating in 2021 uh, i'm sure the roads are excellent and we'll, we'll have no mud but just in case we'll put up some inch and a half all right, that sounds good. I've been muting myself. All of a sudden, the the, uh, the crows or something are coming in, and I can't hear anything. And I'm hoping that you guys can hear. Um, so, Martin, I think that's that's a good idea. Um, we need to get rid of that truck. I would just like to see something in writing as far as how much per yard we're you know we're we're spending on. It. Um, I know what we have been paying. I think it was Newton for the the, the, the sand. So like to see it in that neighborhood certainly um uh what does everyone else feel sounds good to me i i agree uh, sounds I, like, I agree with that sounds like a good way to go i i think the uh, i think i think it's a lot cleaner if shane just gives us the money for the truck up front and we aren't worried about, I'm keeping track of his hours, but you know, 
Uh, it seems like to me that's the way to go, but uh, I'm good with whatever way Martin wants to go. Yeah, he and I have talked about this. He feels pretty strongly he'd like to get a credit on uh, hauling. As long as there's a clear and defined time frame and um, quote on, on the hauling and there's something we're doing because we're needing not just an extra so we don't have to do something, I'd be, I'm, I'm fine with it. Are we still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm definitely, uh, I definitely feel strongly that I'd like to have it worked off and hauling. It does me no good to have $6,000 check cut to the town, it goes to general fund, and then it's just one more thing that hits my budget. Uh, you know, we've been over this a hundred times, but um, the things that hit the general fund don't get balanced out in my budget. It's no good to me on the road department side of things. Well, Martin, don't say it's no good to you because, I mean, no one at the end of the year comes down and says, Martin, you're over this, you're over that, and gives you a slap in the head. Um, some things go to the general fund. It's all It all comes out or, or goes into the same pocket. Um, I think the, the, um, the finance committee is working on a document or something to show uh, receivables so people – we're seeing it, but the, at the end of the day, it's not what's best for, for you, quite frankly, it's what's best for the town. And if it's quite, if it's best for the town for us to get a credit on that, I agree. But if it's just because you feel it's going to make your budget look better, then no, I don't agree. It, we should take a check for it. So I want the decisions to be made on what's best for the town, not what's best for at the end of the year to make my budget look better or worse. Well, quite frankly, Tom, I disagree. I've been over this a million times with the board and everything seems to hit the road budget in a negative light. And then at the end of the year, you just say, we'll explain it at the uh, end of the year. But unfortunately, most taxpayers what do you mean are explain it at the end of the year. What have we ever come down on you and, and said anything about anything with your budgets, Martin, ever? Not on the board, no, but in the general consensus of the town, when it hits the road budget, it's in a negative light. Do you agree I, or I disagree? disagree? I'm sorry you feel that way, but I disagree with you. Okay, disagree away. I am. You shouldn't be so sensitive, my friends. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I am. That's why I do such a good job for you. I agree. You do a great job. I do. But when we're making decisions like this, it has to be on the best – What's for the town, not just look at what's best for your budget. And quite frankly, again, it's all going in the same pocket. It really does not make that much of a difference. Not to you, apparently. No, it doesn't. No, apparently it's, not. It's whatever is best at the end for the town. So $6,000 in the general fund or $6,000 in hauled material makes no difference. I get that. It makes no difference to you. It makes a difference to me. Okay. But again, I'm trying to make the best decisions for the town. And if the board thinks... As am it, I. Well, you've told me that's not what you said. What you said was it's the best decision for you because it looks best on your budget. Yeah, which is what is best for the town. You consider all the times that I take hits on my budget and they continue to pile up. And then every year you expect people to vote on things when the road budget over for example, by, what hits are you taking on your budget martin any trucks any grant work any es that the excavator your, wait, 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 wait. it's a hit Explain on my budget it's a hit on your budget it's a hit I, on my budget because it wasn't pla it was not put in prior to taking out so it shows as a deficit all right well this is a new point let's move on but i again um we try to make the decisions best what at the end of the Tom, day you brought it up tip. so huh? you can move you brought it up yeah i did i'm not denying it martin i'm just saying i always try to make the best decisions in the the day what's best financially for the town and if it's uh, getting a credit and hauling i think that's the way we should go if it's just to make your budget look better no i don't believe that's the way we should go
Okay, it's great to know how the road department stands. Thank you, Tom. What do you, what do, uh, Tom, do don't that. even, no, don't no, no, even wait, start. Don't comment. even start, Tom. No, explain that comment. Huh? If explain you don't you have any discretion towards the road department and how these matters lay out, then I guess we know exactly where you stand. Uh, that is really a petty comment, Martin. Of all the stuff, Tom, that, Tom, yeah, Tom, the you after you, you and the board well, yeah, you yeah, and, okay, and petty, petty, petty. Yeah, that is such a petty comment. Yeah, thank you, Tom. We know your opinion. Move on. All right. So, what is it with your vacation pay you're looking for? Well, it's unfortunate that COVID hit. I was going to have surgery. I put the town first. I did not have it in the middle of the summer. I'm looking to possibly have it done this fall. If I can't get it done this fall, could I have my time rolled once again? How much time are you looking for? I have no idea. Sherilyn tells me it's 28 hours, which makes absolutely no sense. We can roll three days, which is 24 hours. So why would I ask for special approval to roll two hours? makes no sense whatsoever. Unfortunately, I didn't keep track of it myself. So I think we're looking at a week and a half to two weeks, but we'll get that squared away. Well, if it's to get your, um, your knee or your shoulder, I think it's fine. I, what does the rest of the board think? I, I agree with, I have no problem with that at all. It's all, it's all right with yeah, me. Neither. Martin, it, you know, it's, if you can get into get surgery, you know, the sooner the better. Believe me, take it from me. Waited so long on my back and it was really bad. So. <clears throat> All right, so the answer on that is yes. Whatever works out best for you. But I would try to like Mark, if you can, if possible, although I doubt you'll be able to get in if you're just looking for surgery. At this point, it would be unlikely you'll get in this fall, I would think. I don't know. What does your surgeons or doctors say? We're two weeks out, which puts me into a category that I don't even want to go in. But once again, I will probably put what's best for the town ahead of what's best for me. So. Well, again, you should look after your health, Martin. That is most important is your health. Um, take care of that. And then the town will will come after that, and we appreciate you you putting yourself uh, before the town. But again, it's most important that you take care of yourself and your health. So, so would you be willing to roll that time into? An, would you be willing to roll that time into twenty twenty one, if that yeah, makes the most sense? Okay. That's what we just said. But, you know, I hope that you can get it done earlier. I mean, I think that would be your best bet, but um, I guess she's gone. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we have the budget discussion, or pardon me, Cheryl Lynn. Yes, I'm here. All right, so you want to discuss the CD? Yes, I wanted to discuss the CD, uh, the Savings Reserve CD. It's due to roll over on September 12th. Um, and as a few of you have talked with you about that we have to um, roll over the um, money over to pay the bills for 2020 um, due to the expenses in the um, sidewalk fund. So there's not that big chunk of money like we've always had sitting in that CD right now. So my recommendation would be to not roll it over right now and wait until the money's paid back from the taxpayers when the taxes start coming back in. Oh. Are, we frozen? Are we frozen or can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, no, I think that's... Uh... Good idea. And I can check back in with you guys um, when tax dollars start rolling back in because of the sidewalk. We're definitely, you know, this year. Um, so my guess is it'll be sometime after November before I can get back to you um, <clears throat> at a 
you know, with a better figure of how much we should roll in safely um, because we still have to pay the rest of the bills throughout the end of the year. Yeah, so I think if we had it around, um, it's probably probably the best thing I would say until we start seeing more of the um, tax funds come in. Okay. What is, What's what everyone else the, feel? Uh, what is the amount we're talking about? What um, is the amount? Of I'm sorry. We had originally okay. was a little over a million dollars in there. Um, but the voters voted to borrow from ourselves and we ended up having to borrow um, more funds than anticipated because of the sidewalk. Um, right. So um, right now, um, just in the CD, there's 145,620. And in, um, I'm sorry, I, I, in, this, in the reserve fund, there's 145,620. And in the Northfield Savings Bank CD that we've um, had to um, borrow from, there's 48,313. So um, we, sh we should be fine getting through the rest of the year. Um, but as far as taking those funds and rolling them back over and securing them again, it makes me a little nervous because taxes aren't due until November 1st. Okay. Yeah, that makes I think that sense. makes sense. And maybe the finance, or you on the finance committee, you guys can uh, come to us with a recommendation, maybe at our November meeting, as far as a um, CD that you guys would like to uh, go ahead and uh, invest in. Yeah. Okay. So, John, you want to make a, a motion on that, just so we have that? Okay, so um, I'll make a motion that uh, we don't roll the CD over. So just uh, yeah, put in. I'm not sure if we need a motion on that at all, but just to have it so we're we're all on the same. Yeah. The second. Second. Thank you, uh, Callie. And uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Cheryl. Anything else? Uh, no, nope. I think I'm all set. I'll stick around for the budget in case you have questions. Yeah. Um, so I wanted that on the uh, agenda just so it's something we start looking at. I know Sasha will have her send out to all uh, department heads um, uh, request for their budget for 2021. And I'm wondering if there's any special um, instructions anyone wants to add um, or Cheryl in, or if there's anything that you're thinking or if there's any other thoughts on how we should approach the 2021 budget. Um, I have a, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Ray. Go ahead, no, Ray. Go ahead. I'll speak afterwards. I, I think... I think overall this year, we've done very well with our budget. Um, I think everyone has been cautious of it. Um, I think COVID has taken a few of the budgets, you know, not largely, but um, I've got a few grants to help cover those. I'm hoping to find out if they have been approved here shortly. So, um, and if they are approved then it shouldn't hurt our budgets at all. So I think everyone's been pretty cautious about it. Um, so as far as changing anything going forward, I don't, I mean, I, I mean, I, other than, you know, I don't know where else you could cut anything in the budget. Yeah, no, we're, as far as cutting, I don't see much going on there. Um, certainly look for a flat line budget. Um, I mean, we'll expect to see increases in wages. Um, and probably certain services that include, you know, fuels and things like that. Um, but we'll have to, you know, make sure people are trying their best. And, and most people, all their, everyone does with their budgets here in town, um, you know, to be fairly uh, uh, tight. So I guess we'll continue that, see what comes back, um, and we'll go from there. Ray, you had some comments? 
Don or Ray, one of, either one of you? Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I'm going to say that uh, I was following the line you're thinking, Tom, that uh, I don't expect any budget cuts, but I really think we can emphasize that uh, uh, that really level funding is probably as best as we're going to be able to do with a lot of the departments other than the wages. You know, um, and I guess they should be thinking about that when they're putting together their budget that, uh, you know, that they pretty much got to live with what they have for this year, next year. Yeah. Don, you had a comment? Well, I think a couple of meetings ago, you mentioned that you wanted uh, people to kind of look through the budget and uh, have some thoughts about well, where we can maybe grab, grab some money or save some money or something. So I don't know if that is that a, a, are we doing that tonight? Or have you? Yeah, I mean, have you? If you, well, we haven't started the budget, but if you, if there's a few things that might because you're new, you may have some questions on. Um, so I don't want you to be wasting any time, but uh, what are you, what have you recognized? No, no, we, we can, we, I can wait if there's something, you know, something I'm looking at and that's still something that we want to entertain that some people might have some ideas when going back looking through the budget where in these strange days we might make a few changes or something. So well, we can, why don't you share some? Do you have any ideas? Uh, um, yeah, I do actually. But uh, if this, can you want to do this tonight? Or you don't another have, I mean, it's, if you're well, comfortable and you have some things you want to share, we could take 10 to 15 minutes. But if you'd rather put some stuff together, maybe what would be best done is if you put something together and send it out to the board. Um, we'll have the budget going on each agenda going forward here for the next month or so. Um, but if you can put okay. in anyone, put their ideas uh, on paper, send it to the to Sasha and she'll distribute. That way we have an idea to take a look at it before the meetings so we're not caught, you know, a deer in the headlights and like, I don't know, I can't, you know, just give us a little time to prep on it. And I think that would be fair. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. That's what I was um, thinking that we would do. Perfect. Cool. All right. Callie, you have anything you want to discuss on the budget at all? No. Nope. No, good. John, how about you? No, nope, not at this point. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to um, Linda Van Tyne, the abatement decision. Did everyone have an opportunity to um, see the letter that was most recently sent, I'm going to say within the last week or two, right, Sasha? Sasha? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yes, in the last, it was right after the last meeting. And has everyone, Don, did you see that? Yes, I did, yeah. Ray? Yeah, uh, just to recap, the letter basically said that uh, uh, the property is in her hands and she's responsible for the taxes on it. And that's- Yeah, I, I can, let me look for that email. I think I have that one. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's hard to get your look at stuff, your emails where you're on Zoom. It's hard to figure out how you can do that. And move it over or something, I don't know. Uh, let me just see. Yeah, I think I can share it. Um, share the screen. Uh, that's not going to do it. All right. Well, I guess I. It says uh, several years ago, I consulted with my lawyer about my will. My uh, I was concerned with probate, etc. The only asset I have is my home although it was still has a mortgage on it. He has set up a life estate, meaning I have total control of the property until I die and it does not go through probate. At any given time, I can sell or rent or give away my property and the heirs have absolutely no say in it until it becomes theirs upon my death. I hope this addresses your question. Thank you for your patience in this matter, Linda. So, um, 
there you go. Is everyone able to um, hear that? Yes, yeah. I heard it. So what's, yeah. Yeah. so based on the information that was provided to us, what she is now uh, provided, um, I'm willing to go ahead and uh, abate her taxes for last year. Um, I know she has sent some in. I think that should be um, sent back and um, she's done her, her, her job. I think she's, she's living a very, um, you know, living on a slim dime and uh, as a town, I think it's the least we can do for some of our citizens like this once in a while. I agree. Tom, Ray, I agree. Callie, what's your thoughts? I think that's a good idea. Same with me. John, thank you. Sasha, so or Cheryl-Lynn, you had something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to um, put in there that if you're going to make a motion of some sort, are you talking about the balance that's still due? Are you talking about what was due less the homestead? Where are you at with that? It was um, it was the full tax bill for 2019. The, la the year that she was a filing for, I don't have that paper in front of me. Was it 2020 or 2019? 20, 2019. So you're saying that any of the, because she has made payments. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, would we read her the payments that she's yes. asked? Okay. Well, maybe, maybe if we looked at that, if we did something that we, we, uh, See if we should maybe try to just help her and apply it for this year, whatever payment she's made, or or do you think refunding it would be better? Because you know, I like your idea better, Don. The issue will be. No, I think I like your idea better than mine. <laughs> um, if we could uh, give her a credit on that rather than. Send it back. I I guess I don't know. Um, I sounds mean, better, but no way ethic. I mean, uh, I don't know if we can do that, Cheryl Lynn. Um, yes, you can because the tax bills have gen been generated. So once the tax bills are generated, then an abatement request can be granted. Um, and and right now during COVID laws, the select board has that option. So why don't we abate what? is left and apply a credit to whatever she has paid uh, to the 2020 taxes. That would accomplish what you were saying, Don. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, it was just throwing it out there as an idea that and then, you know, maybe that could help her for this year. Yeah, no, I think that's, um, I think that's fair. John? So is that, that a motion? Uh, and I'll second that. All right, thanks. Any further discussion on the motion? The motion is we will um, uh, abate Linda Van Tyne's 2019 taxes, credit her with the amount that she has paid to her 2020 taxes. And if there's no further discussion, all in favor, vote aye. 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 John, Ray. Aye. 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 And all right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, reports, communications. Sasha, let's start with you. Do you have anything? I do. Um, Craig Oshkella would like to be reappointed to the DRB as an alternate, his term was up in August. So moved. Is there a second on that? No, second. Callie, any uh, discussion on reappointing uh, Mr. Oshkosh to the DRB as an alternate? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. All my right. Next, my next thing is now that the sidewalk on the old Haynes property is done, 
Um, it was in the minutes to do the stump, which is now owned by the Beards. And the quote that I got last year still stands. And she reminded me that it, it was less than 350 and they would leave the mess for the road crew to clean up to make it cheaper. Yeah, I, um, so you want um, an okay to go ahead with that? Yes. John, I know you were, in, that was something you were involved in, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, that what was the uh, the company? Oh gosh, uh, I think it was Fars. I think I'll have to look okay. again. Okay, I guess it. I mean, they they would be um, hired directly by them, correct? By Beards? No, no, the town. No. Okay, okay, all right. So I'll make the motion then that uh, that well that we um, have Fars remove the stump and Beard's front yard, and that the uh, town will clean up the mess. All right, is there a second there? Second. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you. Ray, um, any further discussion on that motion from John to take the stump out? You know, something we've talked about for a while, so it was all in favor, vote aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sasha, continue. Um, the next thing is I need a signature on the pay rate for the assistant librarian. If I could have somebody come in and do that, please. John, will you be in town at some point? Um, yeah, I will be sure. I could be. No, I, I think John has to sign. I yeah, think. yeah, I'll, I'll sign it. Okay. John, yeah, I think. I'll say John and Ray can sign. You said John, not John. I'm sorry. Okay. And then the last thing I have is actually two things. It's the town hall. Um, the rec committee is wondering if they could meet at the town hall coming into the colder time. And they've been doing their meetings outside at the gazebo behind the town office. But with colder weather coming, they're wondering if it would be okay to do it inside at the town hall. And somebody is also asking about renting the town hall twice a week for yoga. Hmm. I don't know if we're even opening it up for anything like that yet. I'd say no. Say no. On you, Tom. I'd say. I'd say no to the yoga, but I mean, the rec committee, it, yeah, we're not talking that many people. Yeah, we need to, uh, I mean, the rec committee is a town committee. They need to be able to meet. Um, right. And it's a, they're, they're working on a lot of good stuff. So it'll have to be the town hall or the town office. Um, I think we need to sit down and when I say that, I think probably a couple board members, maybe with Sasha, with Cheryl Lynn, and figure out how we're going to move going forward with the office. We've got the plexiglass up. Um, looks good. But we need to figure out how we're going to conduct business going forward. I don't know how much longer, you know, we're going to be required to wear masks and the social scene, but... I think it's going to be a while and we need to figure out how we're going to conduct business. I don't think we can keep an office closed um, indefinitely like this. Okay. And that's all I have. So, are you thinking, so Tom, are you thinking a couple of us get together and bring? Yeah, I mean, I don't know where else we can meet or what we can do. Um, uh, you know, as a board, I mean, I know Ray and I'd like to meet a little bit once in a while in, in person. Um, and it seems like we need the space. I think it's going to be the town hall. Um, and, you know, let's figure that out. we got the rec committee that wants to meet there. Um, and certainly with the libraries conducting their, their business there right now. 
I think we just need to figure out, make sure it can, I know it can all work, but how it can be done and done safely. So are you suggesting that like a, a couple of us get together with that? Well, I think the people the that, are, that are most impacted. Um, yeah, a couple of people on the board, uh, Cheryl Lynn, uh, Sasha, uh, Corey, uh, I think all, you know, everyone has a little uh, skin in the game. Um, certainly at the end of the day, the board here has the final decision, but I want to make sure everyone is comfortable with what we're doing and, and how we do it and that we're, we're, we're moving at a, the right pace. Um, okay. and so I, but I do think it needs to, to, to be done. Uh, what, what does everyone yeah. else feel? So I have a question. Do you think that town office, I mean, this is maybe what a little subcommittee will figure out of a couple of board members and the other folks you mentioned. Um, I mean, is the town office out of the question? I mean, it has probably a better air system and better windows that you could open if you needed to. You could spread out so you had six feet, I suppose, with your mask on. And maybe that's a consideration as well. I don't know. That's no, I, I think that's why I mentioned team. Sasha and, and Cheryl Lynn yeah. as, as people that are stockholders in it. If it was just yeah. over at the library or the, the town hall, then they wouldn't be impacted at all. Um, but uh, I mean, again, that's including where we meet, but also how we how they conduct business going forward. You know, when can the public, you know, go in? Is it Monday, two, two to three or whatever? Um, so who who on this board would like to be involved in that or has the time to, to put forth with that. I'm happy to help. Don, very good, thank you. Anyone else? I know, John, you've been doing a ton. Um, Ray, uh, Callie, I know, I know you guys are um, also have uh, secondary issues, you know, uh, but, um, you know, I'm not sure what you're, are we talking about just one meeting to put this together? We meet in with Sha Sasha and Cheryl Lynn and, and the two select board members. What are, what are, are we meeting with all the committees and or what are we? Well, not, not, not all the committees. I think um, I would, I would want Corey there, maybe someone from the, the town um, library, because again, that building, they're using that right now. Um, and then the town office, because, you know, that's where we would conduct the business and just come back to the board with, all right, this is the way we feel that we can move forward conducting library hours, um, meetings, whether it's in the, the town hall or not, whether we want to, to go ahead with uh, renting for yoga and those type of things. Um, you know, you may... Uh, this group may look at it and say, all right, you know, we're open, you know, it's Saturday mornings, they can come for three hours. They have to hire a cleaner afterwards. Um, you know, I think these buildings and things can be used. It just needs to be different procedures perhaps put in place uh, for cleaning up or, or such. But I don't think we should, you know, turn off all the lights at this point. We need to start cautiously um, opening up to to accommodate what's going on in, in the society. Glad to, uh, I'll be glad to work with the committee, work on a committee. Yeah, so, perfect. So Ray, why don't you, Don, um, and Cheryl Lynn, I'll have Cheryl Lynn coordinate it, uh, coordinate a time with you guys, Corey, Sasha, so that you can get together. I will try to, um, you, well, I don't have to give any more direction. You know what we're looking for. But if you have questions, um, you know, feel free, you know, uh, open line here. Just what we want to do is a plan to, to move forward. And you guys are good thinking people. I'm sure you can come up with something. And you, know, you come back to the board with it next meeting. And then we can, you know, tweak it one way or another or come with some options. Uh, but look at everything. I mean, I would... Rather than putting a big no in front of everything, I would say, all right, let's see how we could accommodate this. People want to rent this for yoga. Well, when is it? Well, no, it does not work on this day because that's our busiest day. But if they want to do it on Sunday and, you know, Tuesdays, 
you know, fine. Um, but this is the, they have to do this in order for that to happen. You know, those type of things I think would be good. And then as a town office, um, you know, we'd like to be open these many days people can drop in. Uh, this is the procedure you, you, you know, you have to come in with a mask, you spray your hands off, you know, we have cleaner at the door. Um, just like, I mean, we go, businesses are starting to open up. We need to be the same. Um, but just we need to make sure all the precautions are there so that our people aren't in harm's way. That fair? Fair enough for me. All right, Sasha. So thank you for the um, communications. Um, Don, what do you got for us tonight? Don with a D. Uh, well, I just want to... Uh, I mean, that this will be maybe what will be nice about we have meetings in person. But, I'm sorry, I can't know, hear you very well, Don. Um, I was just, yeah, I mean, this, I would like this, you know, just keep on the radar. And we were supposed to, you know, I think I still owe you a beer for the election. You know, we had the election. You beat me by no, no amount of votes. So <laughs> we didn't have a recount. Um, and at that, little informal meeting we were going to sort of maybe try to figure out how we can maybe move ahead with and maybe this will come out of this meeting about figuring out meeting space and then we can move forward with a library town hall committee that we're is still brewing so um i, and I think that's I'll, if once we yeah. get parameters on how we want to meet going forward and that's what you maybe that maybe that's your outline how do we meet as a committee going forward and open the town office. Um, we have that, and then, um, then you know we, we can start it. that that committee up because there's a more of a formal process. This is how we'll do it. Um, and I'm all for you guys or people getting. In fact, I talked to Sherilyn or Sasha today about that uh, particular committee or to get something. And I'm just, is there any other one, other people that want to get involved in this? I know there will be at the end when decisions are being made, but I'd like to get people involved early on. So there's no, oh, yeah. and um, so it's, it's not. Uh, have some forums. Yeah. I mean, even have some public forums as we go along. So it's, yeah. Oh no, certainly. But the something. more we can get yeah. Yeah. up front and a diverse board, the better we're going to be. Oh, absolutely. And I think some of the names that we have that are floating out there uh, uh, would bring us a diverse group, or at least a starting group. And then we can yeah. help. Yeah. We don't want it too big. The other thing it I want to just update is that the other thing is, uh, you know, Pony Farm uh, Road. I did put up some of the please slow down signs, and I think they're helping. I've gotten some feedback from some, some of the folks out that way. And uh, I think the sign that they actually put up coming off the interstate, the state, I don't know if any of you have all noticed it, but with the big arrow flashing and pointing that away for Wayfield and Warren has really made a difference in the traffic coming down 100 feet. So that was a good move when they changed that. No, it's uh, excellent. And that was my suggestion. I'm sure Ray uh, recall that too, to Phil Harrington was, yeah. The bottom line is it's really a detour for Route 100 South. And so that's right. what the sign says in Wasteful Warren. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. perfect. I let him know that. Perfect. You know, and, you know, the next thing, that though, the state could do, and it's not necessarily they'll get it together for this um, project, but it would be very easy to, for something like for, with Google and their Google apps and maps, that they would show that there is a detour, you know, right up still shows it. And I was at Roots one day and saw that, right? You know, someone went, oh no, we can't go this way. And they turned around and then they, they could see they were looking at their phone. No, oh no, we can go this way. And they turned around again and went down a hundred B. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Anyway, um, but I think it's, I think it has worked. The signage is all I'm throwing out there. And uh, can you guys, still hear me right yeah hello okay uh and is there anything that was that state police letter that we got a couple of weeks ago are we supposed to 
or we, is that something we want to respond to at some point? Yeah, or reaching we're gonna out to him. the community. We're going to have the uh, lieutenant in. Uh, hopefully, he'll come in within a month or so. Oh, great. Okay. Where yeah. Is? Now, that was uh, nice, Lieutenant White, to, to yeah, reach out. And yeah. uh, it's, I was hoping he'd be able to come by uh, actually during this uh, when the bridge was out, but so we could talk about those issues. But it doesn't really seem like it's been that much. So I, uh, that's fine. But yeah, we'll. Uh, have him we can talk about i mean it'll be just be more of an open table what what are our concerns what are we thinking um and uh, hopefully we'll uh get something out of it and just the last the last thing i was going to mention was uh uh you guys who you were all on the board or when you built the town offices great job because you now look at the town got an award for having a really good you know energy efficient office that was pretty cool. Yeah, the Green Award that was uh, recently announced. Um, thank you, Don. That was uh, uh, something I guess the architects uh, were uh, put up. In anyways, this this building was uh, uh, awarded one of the um, Green Awards for its energy efficiency. So, yeah, I think uh, we have a good office. I think it's well built and. Um, very pleased, but thanks for the compliment. All right, Ray, R A E, what do you have for us? I can only update you on the sidewalk project if you oh. if you want now, or if you want that later. No, I think that's good. Let's go ahead. So we finally got the uh, last catch basin in. Uh, I believe last Thursday and Friday. So all that work is complete. And the last bit of sidewalk, I believe, was poured today. And I believe we'll be stripping forums tomorrow and finish up grading and 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 uh, pulling out of town after tomorrow. Um, thanks. To, it was a long haul, but we got there, I believe. Thank you so much, John. I know you worked very hard the whole project to keep it going. Uh, really, uh, so it was a lot. Uh, it was a struggle at times, but uh, you did really well. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it, John. Thank. Thanks so much, John. Um, you always do a lot for the town. And this is coming out of time. Uh, I know there was some, you know, you had your back issues. You went through a back operation, you went through other stuff. Uh, but I'm pleased you were able to step up and do it. And, and you did it quite well. Um, I think uh, informing the town, the communication was key. Um, you know, if it wasn't nightly, it was every few days, um, towards the end, it was less as less, uh, things were happening. Uh, but no, I think everyone appreciated the, the communications. Um, so again, thanks for all your hard work, keeping people together and everyone in line, including me. Um, and Ray, thank you as well. I know you had several hats in this project, um, you know, from the town, from Dubois, uh, and you really were looking out for, for us. And I think, you know, the, the, uh, the west side uh, sidewalk, uh, how that's going to come out, not being there, be taken out. We can thank Ray uh, and John both with meeting with Phil and, and making that really happen. Um, that I think looked, will look terrific. Um, so everything you guys do, I mean, it's really appreciated. And um, keeping your men in line with Dubois, Ray, as far as not in line, but just uh, making sure that they were doing what needed to be done and having the best project. It looks great out there. I'm, I'll, I was going to send Jeff a text myself, I'm just thanking him for um, the job and, and what it looks like. It's, you know, the whole town it just looks nice. You know, it's really um, uh, well done. Well, thank you, Tom. It was, a, it was a great team effort by a lot of people, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I think everyone on this board, um, you know, has had some stuff to do. And, and Cheryl Lynn um, has actually done a lot as well uh, with the uh, uh, grant on this and keeping us in line with that, uh, paying our bills. So it was a, a, a huge town effort and well, uh, well done. And thank you for for that, and I'm sure everyone out there feels that way. I certainly get um, thanks from people on that. So, well done. Anything else there, Ray? That's it. All right, John Hogeboom, what do you got? Okay, so 
Uh, dog issue first. I got a call on Sunday from Marilyn Spaulding and Mike Farnham's dogs. She had Mike Farnham's dogs because they were running loose on Pony Farm Road. She had them on leashes. Shane was unavailable until later in the day because um, he was working and um, he has no backup. So there was, you know. Well, what we need to do on that, and he does have backup, and the backup's the, the first constable. And well, so what I, I heard of this, I was out of pocket. I'm sorry, I was just out of pocket this weekend, so I couldn't handle it. But what we will, I will talk to Shane, and when he gets these calls, if he can't handle them, or if he's working, uh, he needs to turn it over to the first constable and give them a call and say, this is a situation, quite frankly, this particular incident, I think their first constable would probably be the best to um, respond to um, with Mike Furnham, to be honest with you. Um, so going forward, I think we need to do that. I've also asked Sasha uh, um, to get the directions from Central Vermont Humane Society on how we deliver a dog there that needs to be um, you know, that's wandering or, or that we're picking up. What happens is Shane's been bringing them and his Farnham's dogs over to, to Haddon, Roy, and Roy just lets them have them back um, with instruction. And, you know, we've given Roy instructions. These dogs aren't to go out. He has fines. He owes the town. Um, but there's nothing like that going on. He's just, he goes over there, and I think Farnham's fairly rough with those people and threatening and just gets his dogs and goes, Central Vermont, it will be a different story. They won't put up with that BS. Um, so I've asked Sasha. I know we have a contract with Central Vermont Humane Society. I don't know if there's a key we can get, but today she was working on that information. We'll pass it over to Shane to make sure he has it. The dogs go there. If not, call your secondary, which would be the first constable, um, and let him know what the procedures are. So we'll have Shane reach out to the first and second constable, give them a quick training on what could happen, what transpires. Um, and that's, I think, can help in that situation. So people aren't, everyone calling around and, you know, Shane, I think it's Shane's girlfriend or wife ended up going and picking up these dogs. Yeah, yeah, eventually, and yeah. we don't want to put, you know, all sorts of people in, in harm's way here. Um, but something needs to be done. It's a menace. And I think if we can get them over to central Vermont, uh, I don't think they'll let them have the dogs back because I think they're abused. Um, unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. <laughs> you know, it's really unfortunate, but um, the laws are in their hands. So unless we can get them over there, there's really not a lot that we have any um, say about. Um, Although I've had Shane look into um, a municipal ticketing or, or such we've got some more information he has a paper he's sending over to me from the secretary of state's office um we've already received some ticket booklets from the state i don't know if they're the correct ones but um they will enable shane or our constable or, or our constables to hand out fines that will be um uh, the court will recognize so if they don't pay them the next time they go to get their license driver's license such like that they won't be able to so we're going to actually have um something with a little teeth in it what i did find out from central vermont humane society today was it's pretty much going to be the same scenario as when they're taken to roy hadden an investigation needs to be started as far as any abuse and that's going to take some time i think Right, but I think the, those people are more apt to do it than Roy is and those people. I mean, Roy's a good guy, but they don't, they're not putting in the time to this. I mean, these dogs should have been taken care of a long, or taken away a long time ago. But I thought that was the whole idea of this um, the ticket book and so on, was that um, you, you would have to have a, a court, either a court order or some kind of a decision um, that would be brought to uh, the Humane Society. At least that's what Shane was, was saying. And that's why he got that form over. He got that form over to me too, and I just forwarded it to Sasha. 
So I'm, I'm not sure, you know, it's, it's, it's so hard to tell with Shane, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I know, um, you know, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll reach out to Maxine because I've had Shane reach out to her. In fact, she, they were involved with, with it at one point and I said, well, ask her, you know, she's on the judicial committee, you know, or she runs that with this, uh, in the legislature, she should know, or she should help us out with this. Yeah. Cause uh, she, she's the one who actually got that form over to Shane. All right, so then she needs the I or she should be able to maybe explain it to me or us a little better so that we can enforce it or have something enforceable. Um, and, you know, and Shane, Shane does a good job when he can. He's a busy guy. He's doing a lot of things. Um, he's, you know, does a great job when he's, you know, I get so many compliments from people when he's dealing with their animals or lost pets and, and such. Um, he's also very frustrating that he's terrible with doing any kind of bookkeeping or keeping track of what he's doing. Um, but there is no one else to take that job. Right. You know, um, just no one. And he really does do a good job with it. And he actually has a good heart for it, but he's a, you know, he mows lawns and he works 50 hours a week trying to make a go at it. Um, so he's, he's doing what he can do. Um, but I think if we give him better procedures, all right, when he's available, call this guy. And if this guy's not available, call Clarence or Clarence. And then, um, Tom, or I can't remember the Tom. other constable, but, um, Tom Chinette. yeah, Tom Chinette. Um, so at least there's a few backup. Um, and I don't see that it doesn't happen that often, but, this weekend to happen to, and with these particular animals, it's been a nuisance. Right. Um, the other ones in town, um, I actually went and spoke with the people, and so far there's only been one complaint the summer since. So, um, and I tried that same thing with Mike Farnham, and next thing I know, I'm running or <laughs> going down the road. He's throwing rocks the size of baseballs at my car. So, um, you know, he's just, you know, he's a guy you cannot reason with or talk with. Um, so you know, everyone should stay away from the guy, to be honest with you. Well, speaking of Tom Chenette, um, I looked, I mean, I have his phone number, but I mean, I looked on our website. I don't see anywhere where the first or second constable is listed. Yeah, you know, John, that was one of the comments I was going to have or communications or old business. I wasn't a new business. I think I had a slate. I was going to talk new business about the website. Um, we need to do something about our website unless I'm bringing up the incorrect one, which I just Google more town, more town. The first one that comes up and it's our website and it's so out of date and I can't find anything on it. Um, I can find agenda from June, you know, when they first announcements, stuff from 2019. I mean, it's just a mess. Um, so we need to, when we're budgeting, we'll need to put money in it, but we really need a plan to figure out someone to maintain this website on a regular basis. I mean, it's, I mean, that's most people get their information nowadays, and I don't think they're getting any information from our website. Right. Um, I mean, even, you know, we don't have anyone coming to our, our virtual meetings here, and I don't think that people are getting the information that we're having virtual meetings. Um, going forward, I want to make sure on the agendas that it states that we're having virtual meetings and to... And maybe the agenda I have is, doesn't have it. I, or I know it doesn't, but maybe the other ones do. But we need to make sure um, that we have that. And so that's something like Sasha's on. She's certainly hearing this, but I'll work with her. And I and I approve the agenda, so I need to make sure I'm looking for that going forward. Um, but yeah, the website is in dire need of um, some kind of work over and, and just the upkeep. I mean, again, I can't, if any, I would, as we're sitting here, someone go on, Don, you're sitting there, go on the website, see if you can find tonight's agenda. And I would be, maybe you can, I, I, 
I couldn't. Um, anything else, John? No, that's it. Callie, how about you? What do you got for us? Um, I've been on Pony Farm a few times over the last couple of weeks. I had to take my dog to the vet, and it was great. I went at different times. There was barely any traffic. The road was nice. I saw one bicyclist and gave him plenty of space, and he waved, and I waved, and off we went. So the times that I've been on the road, that's looked great. So... Other than that, nothing else. Alrighty. Well, I think um, it's not much. The, the website I was going to bring up, we have. Um, we'll approve the minutes in a minute, but I want to bring up, might as well for communications, it's old business, but we also had the um, Mad River Riders. John, can you talk about that a little bit? Um, of the rec committee, what we right. need to approve. Right. The, um, the, the subcontract. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we just need to formally approve it. So I'll make that motion that we approve that subcontract for the, uh, um, right. for the trail and the, um, the, uh, park. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Park in the truck. That's all right. Is there a second on that? Skills Park. That's it. Skills Park. There you go, Johnny. <laughs> Ray, okay. oh, Ray's got you, Kelly. Um, any further discussion on it? All right. All in favor of voting, uh, vote yay. <laughs> yay for the um, Skills and Rec uh, Trail. Um, contract. Nature trail. Yeah. Nature trail. Thank you, John. Yeah. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. Thank well, you. I, I have one last communication. All right, John. I'm a grandfather now. Really? Excellent. Congratulations. Do share. My, my oh. daughter had a, a boy who was three and a half weeks premature. Um, uh, but he was born uh, uh, a week ago, Thursday. You know how much he weighed? At birth, he actually weighed five pounds, 13 and a half ounces. Did he lose some after that? And he lost, he went down to five pounds, I think two or three ounces. Wow, yeah. So, but he's, he's gaining now. So we'll, what? so we'll, we'll yeah. He's, What's the name? His name, I only have a first name at this point. His, his name is Anders. Oh, great. Well, congratulations, congratulations. John and Ruth Thank as you. well. And her daughter. That's awesome. All right. Any other announcements like that? Anyone having children, grandchildren? Callie, what's up with you? I have a dog. Okay. <laughs> He's turning seven. So my child's going to be seven. All right. Well, sounds good. All right. Um, is there any other old business? All I did right. look up the website. Yes. And the agendas and the minutes are there, but with like the Zoom ID, but on the top where it says home about calendar, yeah. minutes, agendas, you have to click on that. It's not on... It's not on in the announcement sidebar. So where do you where do you click again? On the so, top. Yep, at the top, it'll say like home about calendar, documents and forms, and then minutes and agendas, and then the next one is contact us. And if you hit minutes and agendas, they're there. Hmm. But they're not in that like announcements sidebar, which it right where. Probably where there are other old ones from yeah what we need to do is it needs to be i mean we can all talk about this but something when you open the website i mean this is something that people look for agendas you know you shouldn't have to hide or, or hunt for the stuff um 
and then the stuff on the sidebar there that should be most recent and then that moves to an archive position um, but let's uh, think about how we, we could go forward or if anyone knows anyone but I, I think it's something we're going to have to spend a little bit of money on and something that needs to be maintained on a regular basis we're not I mean JB's basically whatever Sasha adds you know sends him to whether it's minutes or an agenda, it gets obviously added there. Um, uh, but that's it. There's no other maintenance going on, and it's it's just not um, what we should be doing. I don't think. You know, we need to get better information out there. So, um, also like to uh, approve the minutes for um, 8 18, 2020. I'll second it. Any further discussion on that? All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and what about new business? Nothing. You know, something in old business I have been thinking about. Um, remember, uh, Stefan had come to us in the spring looking for. Um, tanks, you know, oxygen tanks, I believe is what he was needing. And we thought we'd be, if he didn't get any kind of funding through grants, we'd be able to do something uh, in November election. Obviously we're not doing that. Um, Sherilyn, if you're still on the line, have you seen anything on those type of grants for, for tanks or stuff for the fire department? I've seen nothing. I know that Stefan had applied for the firefighter grant for that, but I have not heard anything from him in regards to whether or not it was approved or not. Okay. Um, so that's something as we're budgeting, we need to keep in the back of our mind as well that we may be looking at a fire department uh, request uh, as well. So um, uh, I can check in with him on that and see if he's oh, heard any. Yeah, that would be good if you could, Kelly. Um, all right, I guess that's it then, unless anyone has any other questions, comments, things they want to discuss. You mean in terms of old or new business? Old or new business, John, it's okay. fine. I just wanted to um, mention how difficult it was dealing with uh, Paul Gillies. Um, uh, the, this, this whole thing with the easements, I, you wouldn't believe how many hours I spent trying to get those easements taken care of for the catch basin next to St. Patrick's Church. And I mean, Paul Gillis was sending off, he was back and forth, the, the lawyer, he sent the wrong thing, the, the wrong document, the wrong easement over to the lawyer, and the lawyer got upset because Paul didn't make any of the changes. Well. He, he sent over like the original easement that had first that he had first made up. So I had to remind, I had to actually send him the easement that was that uh, that he had sent over to me from their lawyer, and um, forward that to him, and and then it was finally finalized. And then I said I he had all the cross outs and the additions and everything. And I said to get that over to um, uh, right of way division at AOT. And um, he sent over the, the, the scribbled up copy. He didn't, he didn't even get a, a, a clean copy over. And, and, you know, it was just very, very frustrating dealing with, with that, that firm. And, you know, we had basically reached out to Ron and he gave it to Paul because Paul has more experience, you know, in, in that area. So, but I just wanted to bring that up. That that's something I think we should be talking about going forward. Um, I agree, John. I, I think we need to really look at where how we're spending our legal dollars uh, and where we're what firms we're using. Um, I've been frustrated with a couple things with those guys in that email to you. I stated that. I think right. you saw that. Um, so I think. Yeah, maybe that's something we can put on a future agenda to to discuss. 
and I think it should be an agenda item so everyone can see and maybe those guys want to be involved with it because um, yeah. All right, any other um, new business, old business or anything? I, there was a uh, message from, from Callie that came up. I don't know if everyone saw that. Yep. Um, Stefan has not um, heard anything back, I guess. So um, just a heads up, I wanna make sure we're not ignoring that either. So we don't wanna get other people mad at us or mad at me. Um, but anyways, if there's no other um, anything, I guess I'd uh, move to adjourn. Second. Second. All right, that was easy enough. Thank you. All in favor, would I? Aye. All right, everyone. Have a nice night. Thank you. Okay. You too, everybody. Bye.